In this video, we're going to learn about the Paramesh try to quad conversion in Fusion 360. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, I'm going to talk about converting a tri to a quad mesh and eventually back to a form body in Fusion 360. Now the example I have on the screen was created as a form, and one of the main reasons I did this is so that we could see the form layout. We could see where the divisions and the patches are and how it was actually created as a form body. So what I want to do is I want to talk about Paramesh tools and the recent addition of the try to quad mesh conversion. Now this is something that you don't really find when you look in the create menu or the modify menu. So we need to figure out where it is and what we can do with it. The first thing that I want to do is I'm going to convert this to a mesh body. We're going to preview this. And in this case, I want to use the create quads. Now this tessellate create quads option has been around for a little bit. I do think it's important to note that depending on the license type that you're using, you may or may not have access to all these tools. The hobbies license, from my understanding, is going to have limited access to paramesh tools, but you will still have access to some mesh tools. So this might be a good indication as to whether or not this is a good tool for you to purchase or make the decision to upgrade to a commercial license. So now that we have this as a quad mesh body, this is something that you might end up getting in as an imported body. Because this is paramesh, note that we have this feature in the timeline. What I want to do is I actually want to come back a step and I'm going to copy and paste this so I have a second version of it. When I paste it, what that's going to do is it's going to create a conversion or a copy of the body but not actually capture any of the form data. Now I'm going to go back to tessellate and this time instead of create quads, I'm going to create this based off of tries. This is a more common way that you would see an STL or an OBJ file come into Fusion 360. Now that we have one with quads and one with tries, let's try to convert this back to a form body. So under modify and convert mesh, we have an option to do base feature or parametric for the operation type. And we have this third option called organic for the methods. Now the organic method will allow you to try to convert what we have on the screen to quads and eventually into a form body. Note that underneath this that it says that it converts a body to organically shaped solid or surface body. Now it does tell us that we cannot edit the form body completing this conversion. So if the method fails and we are using the base feature, we're just gonna get a solid body or a surface body or we might get nothing at all. So again, it's not perfect, but as we understand meshing or remeshing stuff doesn't always go to plan. So it is important to note that the resolution options have by accuracy or by face number. When we do accuracy, we've got low, medium, and high, and then precise. What we're gonna do is we're gonna try this by face number, and we're gonna try it with the quad first and say okay. When we try it based off the quad, keep in mind that the original form body only had a handful of faces, and this new mesh converted quad has a ton of faces. You can see that the conversion did not work. So let's try again using convert mesh. This time, instead of by face number, I'm gonna to go to the precise option under resolution and I'm gonna say okay. Now at this point, it's trying to calculate the body. It's looking at all of the quads that we have on the design and it's trying to figure out or fit all of that B rep geometry and work backwards to a form body. So this process also happens in generative design. When we're working in generative design and we take a look at either a mesh or the organic body that comes out of generative, that's based on the mesh solution from the simulation. Depending on the number of faces you have, this process can take a good bit of time. So we're gonna allow it to crank. It's good that it shows us the compute is working and you can see the end result does show us a form body in the timeline. One downside to this is if we edit this form body, let's go ahead and right click on it and try to edit this, the number of faces that we have are quite large. So when we're looking at this and we select a vertex, this is how we're going to end up manipulating this. We have one little vertice here. So while it did work really well, the precise option gave us an absolute ton of data that we need to manipulate. 
The original body obviously had much less, but we did use the precise option for the conversion. So I'm going to use Control Z to undo. And before we do that conversion, let's go ahead and go to Modify, Convert Mesh. This time, instead of precise, let's try the low accuracy setting. Everything else is still the same, still organic, by accuracy, low, and we're going to say OK, and we're going to see what happens. Now you can see with the low accuracy, what we actually have is a form body that looks a little bit better. However, note that it does have a lot more faces than the original, and we do have some creased edges. So we would want to go in and do things like uncrease to any of those edges that do have creases on them, and you will need to manually go in and select those, but it does get you back to a design that is editable in the form tools. So I'm going to continue because there was an error because I partially increased something. That's okay. Now let's take a look at converting the try. So once again, I'm going to use the same options. We're in base feature. Notice that we have organic. I'm going to do by accuracy and low again. And I'm going to say okay. Now the last one was a converted quad mesh. So quad mesh can go directly into forms a bit easier. The tri meshes have always been a bit more difficult. It has to be a quad in the past to convert it. You can see here that the result looks great. We have the exact same body, but we took it from a tri mesh directly to a form body. So while this process is not perfect, it does get us quite a bit closer. Now at this point, what I wanna do is I wanna go into modify, uncrease, and I'm gonna see if I can box select all the creased edges, say okay. Then what I wanna do is I wanna reduce the count. You can see there are, it looks like there are still some creased edges. So let's go to modify, uncrease, and see if there are any other edges that we can find. Doesn't look like it, but you can see that the geometry is still looking a little weird. I'm gonna go into box display and you can see that some of these vertices have kind of gone out in space. So it's not gonna be a perfect conversion. It will need a little bit of work, but it does get us a bit closer. So you can see here, I can take that, maybe move that one down in. And again, there's still some stuff here that has to be fixed. These corners, because they had such tight creases on them, just did not produce good results. But since we now have a form body, we can use all of the form tools that we know. We can sit here and we can delete a lot of the geometry that's bad. So for example, these edges, we can just get rid of them and get back down to a situation where we have geometry that's easier to control. So this edge, I'm gonna get rid of, get rid of this one here as well. And once again, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get back to a situation where it's easier for us to manipulate the, the design. So again, it takes a little bit of work, but you can get there and this is a better starting point than it is just coming in with an STL, having a mesh body and trying to replicate that. Now we do have that last or that third option is to create a form body and wrap it to the mesh that can be a better option depending on your workflow and the geometry you're using. But I do think that the addition of this try to quad conversion to give us the option to try to make a form body out of it can be really helpful. I think the best option if I were to try to actually convert these would be to try to remesh these. I would want to preserve the boundaries and I would wanna to try to get a smaller mesh count. Having a reduced mesh count is going to be a better option for us because that means that there's less to translate. And then if we come in and we do the convert mesh option using all the same settings and we say OK, then likely what we'll end up getting is a little bit cleaner version. It's still not handling these corners very well. You can see a lot of creases were created and a lot of pinching happened. But we could delete, again, we could delete some of this and we could work with just the major faces and connect them manually. Once more, that, you know, that is a, a potential problem, but using the remesh option is probably a good first step. And then reducing the mesh count is another next good step. Again, trying to get down to a more simple version where the, the corners themselves are not causing problems, but it's just something that we're gonna have to deal with anytime we're bringing in mesh or STL data. So at this point, that is a quick look at taking tries to quads and converting those into form bodies. Now, when I heard that this tool had been added, I thought it was going to be a great addition. And I just 
At first, I just couldn't find where it was until I went to that conversion option. You'll notice that in the direct modeling, this is what you're probably going to be familiar working with, just some options to erase and fill and separate and smooth. And you can obviously continue to work with these tools to, to clean up and prepare a mesh. And if your plan is to eventually convert a mesh to a form body, the time you spend cleaning up the mesh will really help downstream. But at this point, that's as far as I wanted to take this. I just wanted to make sure that we found where that try to quad conversion was so we can understand how to get these mesh bodies into form bodies. If you have any questions, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.